So check this out. Uh, one of my wheel covers came off again. This is like the fourth time uh, I lost the wheel cover. And uh, this is the tire that they replaced last week. But the wheel cover evidently didn't stay put. You know, I uh, checked it like a few times and uh, it felt a little loose, but they all feel loose. But uh, it just looks ugly now because there's no wheel cover. So this week's not looking too great already. Yeah, it's just, I don't know if it's this whole season. Uh, you know, they're supposed to be super busy before Labor Day, but it seems like they've got issues. So a uh, buddy of mine went to uh, Chino yesterday. Last week I spent, uh, I don't know, eight hours waiting for a load. And uh, some guy waited over 10 hours, almost 11 hours waiting for a load. And it was a live load, so it took forever. Yeah, can't make this stuff up. Uh, this week is already, what, I'm already uh, four or five hours into the day, uh, the first day of the week, which is a Tuesday for me. They sent me on a local run from uh, Fontana to Silmar, California, 68 miles or so. Um, and then from there, I, uh, I head back. <laughs> and then they went ahead and gave me an early morning uh, pickup again. So it's like, I'm, I'm driving today, the total amount I'm driving is what? Less than 140 miles. It's getting crummy. It's getting crummy and uh, I hope they can improve this because if not, they're gonna lose a lot of good drivers. Sometimes we are asked to back into tight situations and sometimes we have to back in from the street and sometimes we have to do both. I'm waiting for this truck to leave so I could park in here. Isn't this crazy? So this last Friday, it was horrible. I was uh, sitting in traffic on the five freeway right around Santa Clarita and I was thinking, what the heck is going on? Because the whole freeway was shut down. I'm talking for hours. I'm talking people were out of their cars, they were riding their scooters up and down. I mean, I'm talking about shut down. You know, we were just stopped. When they finally decided to move, we had slow and go, stop and go, slow and go, stop and go, and then stop for another like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It was one of the worst traffic experiences I've had in years. When we finally got to the scene of the accident, it was crazy. So as you guys can see, there's fire trucks all down this right side. And uh, a lot of them are paramedics and... Uh, and then you also see some of these green trucks. I don't know what they are. Uh, but so at this point, I don't know what happened because I start seeing the right side of the hill completely burnt out. And then as I get closer, I see a like a John Deere type of excavator laying on its side. And then look at the uh, guardrail. The guardrail down the right side is completely gone. And it's like twisted metal right there. It's completely, I don't know what the heck happened. It's wild. I also have no idea what these like bright green trucks are. I wonder what they do. I don't know if it's just another fire department or what, but first time seeing these trucks. And then check this truck out. It's completely on its side. It looks like it's like a dirt hauler or a dumpster type of truck. And then the windshield is completely blown out. And then it looks like also behind it that it was carrying some kind of a flatbed trailer, uh, which means that this could have been the thing that was hauling that excavator. Um, maybe I'm speculating too much. I'm putting two and two together without even knowing what the details are, but this is wild. Another green truck and more fire trucks. But yeah, this is what caused a four hour ride through the grapevine on Friday. It's wild. And I don't know what the details are and what happened, but it is wild. Anyway, uh, I wish those people are all safe and uh, they're not having a nightmare of a time trying to recoup from this because uh, it looks pretty scary. I mean, if it put the side of a hill completely on fire, it looks pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, I was one of the unfortunate ones that was behind this, having to go northbound on the five freeway and yeah, sitting through it for four hours was not cool. Luckily, I was only a, a little bit late because I left way earlier than I should have. If I would have left on time, I wouldn't have made my appointment. Even though I was late to my appointment, I wasn't late enough where they wouldn't accept me. So it was good. What is going on, my people? So it's been another rough week, probably cleared about 1,600 miles, which is really sad because I like doing over 2K if not close to 2.5K miles each week. And this is a regional dedicated with a lot of stops and waiting times at shippers and receivers. So I know a lot of you guys do over 3K each week, but uh, this isn't that account. So, but 1.6K for me is horrible. I know the average driver does about 1.6K in our account and uh, I guess they're okay with it. But for me, it's it's not enough. I like moving, I like going, I like making things happen in, in the shortest amount of time possible. So being efficient. So while you're out of the house for five to six days a week, what are you doing, you know? Gotta make money. I mean, I'm not sacrificing my personal time and family life just to, you know, lollygag around, you know, uh, I want to maximize those hours, maximize the miles and try to make the most money I can. Because being a regional truck driver or an OTR truck driver, you're making huge sacrifices. You're not home. You're basically on the road the whole time, you know, and for us regional dedicated, we're lucky enough to come home on the weekends. So you know that when you encounter problems, obstacles, um, things that derail you, it sucks. It does. It sucks. Um, it stresses you out because you're going from point A 
to B to C to D. And if things go as planned, you don't have the delays, you don't have the hiccups, you don't have the surprises and the problems. So sometimes these problems or the tension and the drama, they could actually make way for an opportunity for success and excellence. Sometimes because of a problem, we have to rise above. And when we rise above, we can show our excellence. So the problems and tensions usually are very bad. You don't want them, right? And it shouldn't have to come to a situation where problem or an obstacle or some type of tension is needed for us to be excellent. And if we have too many unnecessary problems, it's just going to weigh you down. So we strive to be proactive. We anticipate and we're proactive. And the more proactive we are, the more problems we usually avoid. It's like when you're at the truck and you do a pre-trip and a post-trip, you're basically looking for problems or issues. And if you catch it during those times, you probably won't have a major incident on the side of the road or cause some kind of accident or have some kind of issue. So sometimes these problems and these issues are like an alarm clock. You know, they wake you up and they cause you to react or do. And sometimes we wake up fine on a daily routine without an alarm clock, but sometimes we need that alarm clock. A lot of times I feel like problems arise in my life and they could be moments of opportunity where I could rise above and I could utilize some of my gifts and talents to hopefully bless other people in the process or choose the harder route sometimes or do the right thing, even though it's difficult. I'm not a perfect candidate for, or a poster boy for doing the right thing all the time. I have my issues too. You know, sometimes I like to take shortcuts. Sometimes I like to do things where I think back and go, Ooh, I shouldn't have done it that way. Ooh, I should have been a little bit more careful. Ooh, I should, you know, I'm a human being. We all go through that. But a lot of times when these problems hit us, they can be golden opportunities to help out other people, to help out your organization, to help yourself out and to rise above. So most of life, when we plan it out, we're thinking everything's going to be golden, you know, or at least when we have what we have in our mind, our pathway from A, B, C, D, E. We're not sitting there already calculating the problems. We're thinking, oh, if I go from A to B to B to C to C to D, it's realistic. I can get X, Y, Z done. I can make this much money and things will be great. And then you've got other people that are sitting there too cautious to act, too cautious to implement their ideas. You know, you got somebody like me on the flip side, which <laughs> scratches almost every itch in their life. And, you know, I've got too much junk in my garage and I got too many hobbies that I went through, drove people crazy with all the hobbies I had. But there are the other people that hate risk and even though they're very bright, intelligent people, they don't implement the golden ideas they have in their head. They just sit back and go, oh, I could do this. I could do that. You know, because why? Because there's a risk of failure and there's a risk. And most cautious people, smart people, they think, why do I need to take that risk? I'm comfortable where I am. You know, why do I need to do that? And it's it's true. If you're comfortable where you're at, why do you need to do it? You know, and that's that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic and debate about you know, the meaning of life, your purpose on life and everything else. But I'm one of those people that if I think it's a good idea, or if even if I think it's an interesting idea, sometimes I jump the gun, go in head first, right? You won't know how things are until you go through that gate. And once you go through that gate into that loading dock area, the whole distribution center area, you won't know if there's seven trucks already docked there and you're the eighth truck and you're going to have to wait five, six hours, or you're the first truck or second truck and you only have to wait an hour, hour and a half. Basically, what I'm saying is that you won't know until you go through that gate. So this whole trucking business, people could tell you it's going to be like this, it's going to be like that. And I think you should listen to those people, make an assessment or keep a log of what they're saying. So you have a reference point. Don't take it as a gospel truth and believe everything one person says. Always try to do more research. And when people are credible, you know that you don't have to second guess them as much. But when people are not credible, take it with a grain of salt. So in this job, you will encounter problems. I think in most of life, you'll encounter problems. But especially in this trucking job, you will encounter problems week in and week out. So how do you prepare for those problems? You anticipate. And a lot of these problems, it's hard to anticipate unless you've been there and done that. And so you learn about these problems and it helps you become more ready. But until you go through these problems, everything you know is secondhand. I, for one, do not wish any problems upon anybody, but because the job itself is broken. It's not a smooth ride every day. You have problems day in and day out, and that's why it's broken. So you need to be ready. And don't always think that problems are a bad thing. You almost have to think that problems are a norm. But at the same time, you have to be vigilant to fight those problems. If you don't fight those problems, you will be a doormat and you will probably end up being completely mentally drained and you probably won't last a long time. Yeah, I know. It's tiring constantly fighting, 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 you know, being proactive, 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 proactive. It's hard. It's tiring and it's not for everybody, but we still have to fight the good fight every day. So do what you can to be proactive. And when I say fight, it doesn't mean like you're getting aggressive and in people's faces and stuff. I'm just saying that you're not being taken advantage of and you're asserting yourself and saying the things that you need to say and asking the company and asking the people for what you need. And don't be shy about it. You have to be proactive in this job. You will get neglected 
if you're not proactive. You will be just a number. It's not like people are secretly monitoring you, keeping tabs on you on all the good things you do. On all the bad things you do, yes, they are. But in all, but in all the good things you do, you're just invisible. And then they realize, oh, you know, you came out in this report and this happened and your metrics are like this and your average is this and you were, and this percentage of the time you were bad and that percentage of the time you were good. And, and they see your report and they do an annual review, quarterly review, whatever. And if you hit a certain threshold, they give you a bonus, you know, but the company is not going to care about you. So you need to make sure you're taken care of. It's not a bad thing. You know, it's speaking up. It's saying, I need this. I can do that. Hey, I'll take one of those. Hey, what happened with my pay? Hey, how come I'm not getting a load? And sometimes, unfortunately, it makes the person on the other side of that uncomfortable. But you got to remember, that's their job. And if they feel uncomfortable, that's what they signed up for. Because we as drivers get uncomfortable all the time, all the time. So truck driving is filled with problems. And I guarantee you, probably most of our lives are filled with problems, right? (laughs) Nothing is smooth sailing no matter how well we plan, no matter how well we anticipate. But it's important that we plan and anticipate and have certain expectations and strive for excellence. Because if we don't do those things, then we end up being the bottom of the barrel, you know, uh, low quality. And we want to make sure that we're top, top tier, top quality. So uh, I hope you guys could all strive for excellence despite the problems. And uh, I hope you guys have a good week. Thank you for following me on this trucking journey. God bless you and uh, stay safe out there. Peace. Until next time. Cheers.